is Jesus going to reign on the earth for 1,000 years? Here are four things the Bible says. Number one, Jesus' kingdom is heavenly. Jesus told Pilate that his kingdom was not of this world, John 18, 36. His reign is from heaven, not on earth. Number two, Jesus must be a priest upon his throne. Zechariah 6, 12, and 13 states that Jesus must be a priest while sitting upon his throne, while Hebrews 8, 4 makes it clear that Jesus cannot be a priest while here on the earth. His throne and his priesthood are both in heaven. Number three, Jesus is the son of the king Jeconiah. Matthew 1, 11 includes Jeconiah in the genealogy of Jesus, and this is important because Jeremiah prophesied that no son of Jeconiah would ever sit on the throne of David, ruling any more from Judah, Jeremiah 22 and 30. Having Jesus rule in Jerusalem would contradict as an explicit prophecy of the Bible. And number four, Jesus meets us in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 says that we are called up and we will meet him in the air, not on the earth. Further, it states that we will remain in that position with him forever. We meet him in the air, not on the earth. It really is a common doctrine that Jesus is going to return to earth one day and set up in Jerusalem a physical throne and rule over a restored kingdom of Israel and then over all the peoples of the earth for a millennium, for a thousand years. But is that actually what the Bible teaches about the reign of Jesus? Oh, the Bible does teach he's going to reign, but I don't believe it teaches he's going to reign from earth. I believe it teaches he's going to reign from heaven. Let me show you four reasons why I say that. Number one, in the New Testament, the kingdom of Jesus Christ is called a heavenly kingdom. Over and again, that's exactly what it's referred to, a heavenly kingdom or the kingdom of heaven. Beyond that, Jesus himself, commenting on his own kingdom, said that his kingdom was not of this world, as he told Pilate in John 18, 36. Hard to make a kingdom that is not of this world bound to this world. About our relationship to Jesus in that kingdom, Paul would say in Philippians 3, 20, our citizenship is in heaven. Peter would add in 1 Peter 1, 4, that our inheritance is kept or reserved in heaven for us. The state, the nature, the fate of that kingdom is to be delivered up to the Father, 1 Corinthians 15, 24. The kingdom of Jesus is a heavenly kingdom. His reign, then, is from heaven, not from earth. Additionally, the Bible states that Jesus must be a priest while he sits upon his throne. Zechariah 6, verses 12 and following say this, And say to him, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold the man whose name is the branch, talking about Jesus, for he shall branch out from his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Amos 9 prophesies the same thing. James, in Acts chapter 15 at the Jerusalem Council, applies the prophecy of Amos to the work that was going on there in the first century. Verse 13 then says in Zechariah, It is he who build the, shall build the temple of the Lord and shall bear honor, and he shall sit and rule on his throne. He bears royal honor, and he sits and he rules on a throne. There is the Christ as a king. But importantly, notice what follows. And there, upon that throne, he shall be a priest upon it. He will be a priest upon his throne. And the council of peace shall be between them both. Understand the significance of that. The Messiah is to be a king and a priest upon the throne in this rebuilt temple. Okay, what does the rest of the Bible have to say about that? Well, the problem resides in having both the king and the priest be from the same tribe of Israel. Kings were from the tribe of Judah, descendants of David. The priests were from the tribe of Levi, specifically the descendants of Aaron. The Bible says in Hebrews 7, verses 13 and 14, about Jesus, it says, For the one of whom these things are spoken belonged to another tribe, from which no one has ever served at the altar. So nobody from the tribe of Judah has ever been a priest in the temple of God. Verse 14 then says, For it is evident that our Lord was descended from Judah, and in connection with that tribe, Moses said nothing about priesthood. Turn over one more chapter in the book of Hebrews, and you'll find this statement in Hebrews 8, 4. Now, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all. Get the significance of that. Zechariah 6 says, when he is on his throne, he must be a priest. The Hebrews writer says, if he's on earth, he would not be a priest. What's the implication of that? If he's not a priest while on the earth, but yet he is a priest upon his throne, then his throne must not be on the earth. That's the conclusion. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. Jesus has to be both king and priest upon his throne. He can only do that from heaven. Number three, Jesus is the son of Jeconiah. Now, why on earth is that important? Well, Matthew 111 states that Jesus indeed has in his, as, as one of his ancestors, Jeconiah, who was king of Judah. Jeconiah was the second to last king of the kingdom of Judah during the period of the divided kingdom after the death of Solomon. Jeconiah came to the throne about 597 B.C. 
Second Chronicles 36, verse 9, it tells us that Jeconiah was 18 years old when he came to the throne, and he reigned for three months and ten days. And about his reign, of a very short reign, it is said of him that he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, what an 18-year-old did in three and a half months on the throne to anger God so much, I'll let you fill in the blank. But Nebuchadnezzar comes back after he's already invaded the land once in about 606, 607 B.C., comes back in 597 and deposes Jeconiah, partly because God has said, Jeconiah has done evil in my sight. Jeconiah is deposed and put in his stead upon the throne was his uncle Zedekiah. So his uncle takes the throne and he, Zedekiah, is the last king of Judah and he reigns there for 11 years until Nebuchadnezzar finally destroys the city and the kingdom of Judah in 586 BC. Why is all that important? Why is it important that Jesus is a son of Jeconiah? There's a contemporary prophet to all of these events. His name is Jeremiah. And he prophesied about many of the last kings of Judah. And he said this specifically about Jeconiah, who's also known as Coniah, a shortened form of his name in the Old Testament. Start with me in Jeremiah 22 and verse number 28. There the Bible says, Is this man Coniah a despised broken pot, a vessel no one cares for? Why are he and his ch children hurled and cast into a land they do not know? Nebuchadnezzar came and took them away. So they end up in a land they did not know. Verse 29 says, O land, 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 hear the word of the Lord. So Jeremiah is effectively calling the land to witness against what, what has happened here. Je Jeconiah was evil. Coniah was evil. He and his family are deposed and, 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 and stripped of their, of their authority. So hear land, understand what's going on and what's going to happen. Verse 30 is the critical verse. Thus says the Lord, write this man down as childless. Now, he's not childless. He and his children are just mentioned in the verse before. But write him down as if he were childless. Why? Because he is a man that will not succeed in his days. What is it that a king wants? Well, among other things, a king wants an heir. A king wants to make sure that his, his, his dynasty continues. Jeremiah says, this is a man who is not going to succeed. His dynasty is coming to an end. Notice what it says there in verse 30. For none of his offspring shall succeed in sitting on the throne of David and ruling again in Judah. Get that? Jeremiah says, there will not be another offspring of Jeconiah ruling in Judah ever again. Well, Judah is, of course, where Jerusalem is located. Well, let's tie that together then. No offspring of Coniah is going to sit on the throne of David in Jerusalem. Jesus is a descendant of Coniah. We also know from the New Testament several times that Jesus is sitting on the throne of David. If Jesus is sitting on the throne of David and he's a son of Coniah, you see a problem? Well, it's only a problem if you've put in what the last part of that verse says, that he would rule again in Judah or Jerusalem. He's not ruling in Judah or Jerusalem. He's ruling from heaven. Jesus, the son of Coniah, is sitting on the throne of David, which was his, his birthright, his inheritance. But he's not doing it from the forbidden city of Judah or Jerusalem. Jeremiah 22, verse 30, forever forbids Jesus from ruling on a physical throne in the province of the state of Judah can't happen. If it did, it would violate the inspired prophecy of the prophet Jeremiah and therefore invalidate the, invalidate the prophecy of the Bible. Simply cannot happen. And then lastly, one reason we know that we're not Jesus is not going to come back and rule upon the earth is because the Bible never says he's coming back to the earth. First Thessalonians chapter 4 says that when we are called up on that last day, we are called up to Jesus. He descends in the clouds. We are called up to meet him. The verse goes on to say, we shall meet him in the air. Now, a lot of people who hold to this doctrine that Jesus is going to come back to earth will use this very passage in 1 Thessalonians 4 as the basis of a doctrine they refer to as the rapture, that there will be a period of tribulation prior to the millennial reign of Jesus that the righteous get to avoid. We get called up in the air. We get raptured, and the rest of the world goes through the tribulation. After the tribulation, we come back and Jesus sets up his millennial kingdom. The problem with this verse is not that it says that we are called up because we are. The problem is that we are called up. And then the verse says, not only will we meet him in the air, but then it goes on and says, for so shall we ever be with the Lord ever. For so shall in that manner, we will forever ever be with him. How? In the air, called up with him forever. First Thessalonians 4 says, we go up to meet him in the air not that he comes down and walks among, among us on the earth. The very verse they used to try to prove it actually disproves it. Called up into the air forever to be with the Lord in that manner. So no, Jesus doesn't return to the earth and set up a kingdom. The Bible does not allow his feet to come back to the earth. He cannot rule from Jerusalem as the son of Coniah. He cannot be both a priest and king on the earth, and his kingdom is a heavenly kingdom to begin with.
Those are four reasons. I don't believe Jesus is going to come back and rule from the earth, or rule on the earth, rather, for a thousand years. That's what the Bible says. Mm-hmm.